This tie almost wrecked me. Hello friends, I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new here, my name's Julie and I am a novice sewist who's working towards making my fantasy wardrobe a reality. In today's video, I undertook one of the hardest things I've ever done and I made a custom striped tie for my friend. This is part four of our wedding series, the conclusion. And uh, it's, of course, gonna go out with a bang. I'm gonna walk you through how I made the fabric for the tie and how I cut out the fabric and then, yeah, show you the finished the finish project the product. Uh, I definitely did not film an outro as well for this um, because I was strapped on time and I sent it and completely forgot. Uh, that was summer, Julie, though. I am much more focused now and definitely better content coming out. I've got a few videos already filmed ready to come out and I've got some amazing stuff coming in the spring, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Excuse the mess we have going on over here. I have like so many projects on the go in this four part series. because I've got some stuff that I'm doing that I'm not filming. So yeah, excuse the mess. Uh, but what we're gonna do first is we are going to make the fabric. So we've got this pattern piece for the back of the tie this pattern piece for the front of the tie and this pattern is available for free uh, I'll leave the link for the pattern in the description down below I am following a separate YouTube tutorial I will also link that to below she has a pattern for a tie um, as well it's five dollars I had this printed already so I was instead of wasting paper and buying and printing another one I'm just gonna use this one and I'll show you how to kind of modify it for the pattern that she's making as well. Uh, okay, so first, what we are going to do is we are going to line up our fabric, our, our patterns, how they are going to be on fabric. So they are going to be like this. And I'm gonna move them back. And I'm gonna show you what we're doing right here so you can see. Um, so we're gonna, this is the grain line. So we're gonna be cutting on a bias, which is perfect because that's exactly what we need to do. So we're gonna line these up how they're gonna be on the fabric. And then we're gonna take our measuring tape and we are gonna measure, oops, it. and we are gonna measure how long, how wide this is. So it is about 11 and a half, 11 and a quarter inches. So I'm definitely gonna want more. So let's, let's just for, let's go 17 inches just to be on the safe side. And we're gonna, we're gonna do this so that we use the least amount of fabric as possible because for anything like me, the idea of wasting fabric is a nightmare and it makes you very, very sad. So um, we're gonna do strips and we're gonna um, zigzag it, if that makes sense. It will, when I'm doing it, you, I will make sure that it's in here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But that's what I'm gonna do now is cut strips. I'm going to cut them at an inch and a half because I want each strip to be an inch. Uh, so that will leave a quarter C, um, seam allowance on either side. So I'm gonna start cutting those pieces at, um, at 18, 18, let's go 18 inches. Um, I'm gonna start cutting those pieces at 18 inches wide and one and a half inches uh, width and I will start putting them together. Now, if you don't have enough, if you measure correctly, you can put a seam between the two. If we're going 18, this way. So you could cut one at seven and a half and cut the rest at 10 and a half and then sew them together that way. But you'll need to leave a little bit of a, a seam allowance here. So you probably want to go to like 19 inches for that one. Um, so yeah, let's do that and we'll start putting some together and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okay. So how the math should work out is that you will need 14 of each piece because this pattern piece is about 28 this way. So going back and forth, that'll be um, 14 peaches of each, 14 peaches, 14 pieces of each color. So we'll start with the flowers and we'll get 14 and then we'll do the red, the solid and get 14. And then I'll show you how to, how to put that all together. Stop it. 
the time, cause I want Wanna freeze this moment, make it mine Hold you close, now my heart's wide open When I'm with you suddenly, I feel no pain Can you make it go away? Can you make it Okay, so here's how we are going to do cutting the inches. So we're gonna take a piece of fabric and make sure that it's 18 centimeters or whatever your um, front tie and back tie is uh, width-wise when you put it, on, put it on the fabric with a good space between and with allowance on the other side, just to make sure that you have enough. So I chose 18 inches for the pattern that's in the downstairs. <laughs> um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your cut up uh, measuring tape and you're going to measure one and a half inches down. And then you're going to measure from that line just a bit below it for that cut allowance. You're going to measure one and a half inches. And then just below that line with that same like itty bitty little cut allowance, uh, you're going to measure one and a half. And you're going to do that all the way down. And then you're going to move over like maybe a quarter of the way. And then you're going to do the exact same thing. Inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half, all the way down. And then you're going to continue that until you get to the end. And then what you do, what you, you want to take the lightest marker you possibly can. I'm using pink on the satin and it's still showing through. I'm not going to worry too much about it. So you can, I don't know if you can see, but it's probably not. It's still showing through a bit. Um, so make sure you take the lightest possible marker. Uh, with my red, I'm using black because nothing's gonna show through this. Um, and then you're gonna take a solid ruler. Um, you're gonna take a solid ruler like this. I borrowed my son's. <laughs> He's great, thank goodness. Um, he had one because I don't know what I'd do without that. And then you're going to line up each notch and then you're just gonna very lightly, very lightly trace. The marks together. Also make sure that you line up your fabric so that it's straight otherwise you're gonna have some wonky uh, some wonky lines like I do. Just get them as nice as you possibly can. And then you just cut along the lines like that. Easy peasy. If you don't have a dull rotary cutter which I do, oh, it's not good. It's not good. There we go. Now we just keep doing that until we have 14 of each color. Uh, so I'm going to do the rest of these and I'm going to do the red and then I'll meet you back here. So now we have all of our fabric that we needed cut and we have tissue paper. So what I'm going to do because this is this stuff, especially the, the, the stretch satin, not so much, but this stuff is super slippery and super hard to sew well because it just slides around. So I'm going to try tissue paper. Um, I saw it recommended on Pinterest. I think Pinterest. Um, so I'm gonna try sewing it with tissue paper between it and hope for the best. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a piece of red and take a piece of um, my my flower. I don't know what I don't know what what kind you're using. But take my two pieces, the one I want on top and the one I want on the bottom, and I'm going to sew these together like this, so that the red's on top. And I'm going to do that with each pair. Now that you've got, you've got one of each color uh, sewn together, you're going to iron them out. You're going to iron the seams out. And then when you're done doing that, you're going to pick your prettiest ones. I now have my pals, the ones with seams that are a little bit loose that I'm hoping I don't have to use, the ones that are just not pretty but are fine, and the ones that are pretty. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to lay them out. Where did my pattern go? There it. So when you're laying them, when you're laying them out, whatever end, whether you, where's my other one? I need them both. I need them both. Okay. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that the points that the points are going the same way because these will be your ends. So you want them and anything to about, no, not 
here and, and up to be pretty because these this is what's going to be on the front. Um, so yeah, yeah, you want anything that's going to be here pretty, you want like maybe lay them out and pick which side is prettiest to lay it out, but like that's what you want. So we're going to lay, lay out the prettiest ones first and then the okay ones and then the mm, ones. And you're going to want to make sure that when you lay them out, you lay them out with a um, quarter inch seam allowance. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Okay. And how we're going to lay them out is we are going to, got a little end over here. I don't have enough room down here to do what I want to do, but that's, that is fine. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to lay this one first. Like that. And then you're going to just lay it with a seam allowance like that. Another seam allowance. And what you're going to be doing, if you can see, is just slowly moving them over so that, so that, um, you have them all where the fabric should be. Yeah, I'm glad I went with 18 because I didn't realize that this was going to be the widest part. I thought the top was. It looks like this is actually going to be the widest part. Um, and see how I'm sort of zigzagging them? Just subtly, that way we don't have a lot of waste of fabric. <laughs> these ones on the very end of the tie. So that I'm very happy with. So do you see how it kind of moves over and zigzags over that way? I'm not sure if you can see that properly, but like, oh yeah, oh yeah, because it's square here and it comes like, like this is a straight line. So it's kind of like, and so what we're going to do is, oh, ow, 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 one piece at a time. Oh, we are going to take these, so wherever it is, we're just going to pull it over. And then we're going to sew these two together and iron the seam. I don't want to be sitting on this, but there's no other option. Okay. Now that's one piece done. Now we're going to make sure that the ends are all tucked in. So like the paper was sticking out on this side. So you're going to want to make sure that um, everything is covered. Everything is covered. I'm going to pull it over just a little bit more. because so I've got a lot more room on this side than I do on this side. So I'm just going to make sure that it's nice and covered. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it again. And then you could pin it here. Um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to pinch it and then sew it because pins suck and I don't have any claw clips. So this is what we're doing. Make sure you press your seams too because it's important. It matters. It makes a difference. Press your seams, people. Back and front if you want. If it's satin, back and front if you don't want. Um, and then, yeah, you'll just do this over and over again, making sure that the pattern is covered. Okay, so the easiest way I figured out how to do this, just so you can see everything to make sure that everything is where it needs to be, is to lay the pattern piece on top of the um, the fabric, the fabric strips that you're making. Uh, so you can see exactly where the next piece has to go so you don't end up like I did, where you're like, hmm, I may not have enough room for everything. Uh, you don't want to do that. Uh-uh, you don't want to do that. Um, so that's how I'm going to do this going forward. And then, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, mm, that's not how, there we go. I had it backwards. Okay. I'm going to move it way over because, and then you want to make sure that like it's in the middle, right? You want, you want the, the stuff to, to be, to be in the middle. So it looks so that you got room. You don't want to be like, I don't have any room because that's what I did to myself. Nobody wants that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over like this. And I'm going to take my pin, my one pin, and I'm going to flip them up. 
And I'm just gonna pin them together so that I know exactly where, where I have to sew them. Now I'm just gonna sew those together. And that's how we're gonna do the rest going forward just so that I make sure that I am in the right spot because I've, <laughs> I have a few close calls. Um, so yeah. Now we have the fabric all done and you'll see that the red's my top because that's how I did it. I did a red pattern, red pattern. And you can see how um, it is crooked and angled this way. And that's so that we can lay it down diagonally. Um, so we can lay it down like, like this and then we're not wasting a bunch of fabric on the corners. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna lay it down uh, pin it, make sure it's all good, and then I'm gonna cut it out. Um, oh, but first, I'm gonna show you how to modify uh, that free pattern that I have linked below to match uh, as closely as possible if you didn't wanna go, um, if you didn't go by the other one, how to make it so that um, the same thing is, is happening, because the pattern that's free doesn't have the, um, the pretty edges and corners that the tutorial online has. So it's actually very simple. Here is my corner piece. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is when you first print these, the corner piece will fit right into this corner. And what you want to do is you want to cut the edges here about half an inch each side. Let me just move this get a measuring deep. Uh, probably between half an inch and three quarters of an inch so that it's doesn't quite fit in this corner because everything is going to be folded in and you'll see that in the tutorial uh, and you're going to want to do that with both of them so this is what the other one looks like oh let's not get it angled properly so it'll kind of look like this and you'll bring it back about uh about the same about between half an inch and three quarters of an inch uh, i eyeballed it if you don't feel comfortable use that measurement uh, but you can totally eyeball it. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Just do it. So you're going to want to put your pattern pieces that are going to be on the outside because um, I'm actually going to do these pieces, these lining pieces, uh, in just the red because uh, I've got some scrap that'll work for that. So these will be cut out on a separate piece. Uh, this is just for the tie pattern. You don't want to waste... Um, you don't want to You don't want to have to do it for things that you just don't need to do it for, right? Let's, uh, let's not make extra work. Who has the time for that? Okay, so I have all of the seams here uh, uh, finished. I'm not gonna do the outside seam yet because I'm gonna do it as I'm folding stuff in. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna follow that tutorial that I've linked down and we're gonna get this tie done. So yeah, this is how the tie turned out. I am so upset that I didn't get a full video of this tie uh, because it just is so pretty. It's so beautiful. It turned out so amazing. Would I ever make another one again? Probably not. It took me so long, like over 20 hours to make all the fabric and sew all the seams together and iron everything and then finish the edges of the tie like it just and then hand sewing the back oh it took forever but it was so worth it because it just it's it's my favorite thing so far that I've ever made it's so aesthetically beautiful I want to put it on my wall <laughs> so yeah I hope you enjoyed the video and if this inspired you to make anything please let me know i would love to hear it see pictures see videos send me all the stuff i i would love to see what you guys are making and creating it inspires me so much to see other people uh just making stuff so yeah i hope you guys have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next video I keep on falling for you.